Hi guys, today we are going to study stresses. When we have an object subjected to a force, this object feels an internal tension called stress. When a structure is subjected to a load, the different parts of the structure feel stresses, feel internal tensions called stresses. The stresses happen to all bodies subjected to forces or loads. If we have a structure like a bridge, for example, if the bridge is subjected to wind, to traffic, to the force of the water, for example, the different parts of the bridge feel stresses. All stresses cause slight deformations in body, but it, it is very difficult to notice them. These are the different stre stresses that exist and the different deformations that make. Let's study one by one. The first, the first stress is called tension. If we have a body subjected to force of tension, we have two opposite forces applied and these forces have the tendency to lengthen the body. Look what happens when we increase the value of the tension. The tension stress makes the object a bit longer and thinner. With no tension, and when we apply the tension, we have an element longer and thinner. The suspension cables of a bridge is a very good example of an element subjected to tension stress. The tow bar is another good example of an element subjected to tension stress. If we have a crane, this is a crane, all cables in a crane are subjected to tension stress. The second stress is called compression. If we have an object subjected to two forces applied that have the tendency to flatten the body, this element is subjected to compression. It's very easy to understand if we see what happens when we increase the value of the force. At the end, the element is shorter and thicker. Compression stress. A very good example of compression stress are the columns and the pillars in every building. The columns and the pillars are subjected to compression stress. Another example of an element subjected to compression stress are the uprights in a bunk bed. These elements are subjected also to compression stress. If we think about a chair, the legs of the chair have to resist the weight of the person, so they are subjected to compression stress also. Third stress, bending. If we have an element subjected to a force and that force has 
the tendency to bend the element, this element is subjected to bending. Let's see what happens when we increase the value of the force. As you can see, the elements, the, the element bends. A very good example of an element subjected to bending is the platform of a bridge. Look what happens when the bus crosses the bridge. Can you feel the deformation? The deformation, in fact, isn't so high, but this is an exaggeration for you to understand what is the bending stress. Another example of bending stress, in a shelf, the horizontal elements are always subjected, subjected to bending and the vertical are subjected to compression. This is another type of bending stress. As you can see, the wing is joined to the airplane and the air force try to bend the wing so the wing is also subjected to bending stress. Shear force or shearing or cutting stress, different names for the same stress. We have this stress when we have two forces applied on one element, both forces have the same value, but they are not applied in the same line. They are very close, but they are not applied in the same line. So these two forces try to cut the element. A very simple ex example of sharing stress are scissors. When we have a scissor, um, the two forces try to cut the element. So the element is subjected to sharing or cutting stress. In the die cutting process, we have the sharing stress. As you can see, the forces are not applied in the same line. So at the end, the element is cut. In every building, this stress is very important because just in the place where the beams are supported, we have a high sharing stress. As you can see, we have the forces very close one to the another, but not applied in the same line. So in these points, the beam is subjected to cutting stress. And the last stress, torsion stress. If we have an element subjected to two forces that try to twist the element, this element is subjected to torsion stress. Look at what happens when we increase the value of the forces. This element is subjected to torsion stress. When we have a screwdriver and try to introduce a screw, the screw is subjected to torsion stress and also the, the screwdriver is subjected to torsion stress and the axles of many machines uh, for example in a wind powered generator when the axis turn by the wind the axle is subjected to torsion stress 
Resumiendo, en esta unidad hemos visto los tipos de esfuerzos que existen. ¿Qué es un esfuerzo? La tensión interna que sienten los elementos de una estructura cuando están sometidos a fuerzas. ¿Cuántos tipos diferentes de esfuerzos hay? El esfuerzo de tracción. Cuando tenemos un elemento que está sometido a tracción, cuando siente que lo están estirando. Ese elemento decimos que está sometido a tracción. Si se deformara o si pudiéramos comprobar cuál es la deformación, veríamos que el elemento se hace más largo y más estrecho. Esfuerzo de compresión. ¿Cuándo tenemos un elemento sometido a compresión? Cuando ese elemento siente que le están comprimiendo. Es decir, si pudiéramos imaginarnos ese elemento deformado, acabaría siendo más corto y más ancho que al principio. Esfuerzo de flexión. ¿Cuándo decimos que un elemento está sometido a flexión? Cuando ese elemento siente que tienden a doblarlo. Cuando siente fuerzas que quieren doblarlo, decimos que ese elemento está sometido a flexión. Si lo pudiéramos ver deformado, lo que veríamos sería un elemento doblado, curvado. Esfuerzo de torsión. ¿Cuándo decimos que un elemento está sometido a torsión? Cuando sobre él aplicamos dos fuerzas iguales y opuestas que tienden a retorcerlo. En ese caso tenemos un elemento sometido a torsión y su deformación sería esta. Y el último, esfuerzo de cortadura. Quizá el más difícil de entender. Un elemento está sometido a cortadura cuando sobre él se aplican dos fuerzas iguales y opuestas, pero que no están en la misma vertical, en la misma línea, sino que están aplicadas muy cerca una de la otra, pero no en la misma línea. Con lo cual la consecuencia es que el elemento tiende a cortarse. Cortadura. And this is all for today. See you next day in class. And thank you for your attention.